This is a quick video to go through Employment Hero's rostering functionality. Now before we jump into the roster, I want to start in one area within the settings of Hero Pay, which is our payroll engine, which is where rostering sits, uh, and it's called Locations. So Locations are essentially cost centers. So you can use Locations however you want. I've got a few examples here. Um, so some examples I've got is uh, we have, for example, a, a disability services company, and within that they might have a particular care site. Within their care site, they have particular clients which they care for, um, who's Bob and Jane. Um, we have also have an example of maybe a childcare center. Within a childcare center, they could have multiple rooms within that childcare center. Uh, you also then have a hospitality example, the Lord Dudley Hotel. Within the Lord Dudley, you've got your back of house um, your, and your front of house. Within back of house, we've got our chefs and our cleaners. Within our front of house, we've got our bar staff and our wait staff. So I think you get the idea here. They're, these can be used in lots of different ways and you can have as many different locations and also sub-locations as you want. Now the important thing about this is that you can then roster all of your employees according to these locations and sub-locations. Um, I'll, I'll follow up in, a, in the next video on timesheets where employees can actually clock on and off according to these different locations and sub-locations. And then pretty much every report that you can run throughout this platform, you can break down by these different locations. So they're a really important feature. Um, if there are any other questions about this, then we can address them, but uh, hopefully this should be pretty straightforward. Now onto the actual roster itself. So when we are building a roster, there's lots of different things that we can do and there's lots of different ways that we can view the roster. So I'm gonna keep this reasonably high level just to give you guys a good understanding of what this looks like and what some of the processes will be. So at the moment, we're looking at the roster on a weekly view. So you can see we've got our days up the top, we've got our employees down the left. We have the gray boxes, which are the actual shifts which we've allocated to the employees. We've got a red box next to Elizabeth, um, which is showing when, that she, when she's unavailable. At the moment, we're hiding any employees who don't have any shifts, but we can also show employees who, um, uh, who don't have shifts in here as well. And it, as you can see, it'll also show up any approved leave as well. And that will all come through into the platform automatically. So from a, um, uh, from a shift perspective, so we mentioned before that we've got the gray boxes, which are the shifts. You can also see that we've got some icons in the top right corner of those shifts. So we've got a little orange circle with a pencil next to some of them, which means that these are shifts which we have built in the roster, but we are yet to publish to the employees. So we're using this for planning purposes, so the employees can't see this. We then have some which have a, a little green box, a little green circle rather with a tick in them. This means that we've published the shift to the employees and also the employee has accepted the shift. So there's lots of different rules that you guys can make around this, whether uh, shifts will automatically be accepted once you assign them to employees, whether employees have to go in and accept them themselves. You can have employees have the ability to, to decline shifts if you want to. And you can also give employees the ability to swap shifts amongst themselves based on the criteria that you've set for that shift as far as who, um, what sort of qualifications you need or who's available, etc. Now, if it comes to actually uh, setting a shift for an employee, this is fairly straightforward. So let's say that we want Lucy to work on a Saturday. So really simple, we can put in the times that Lucy's gonna work. Um, I'm gonna make this quite a long shift just for the purposes of showing you guys how the, um, the costs calculate. Now we can also set our location here that we want Lucy to work in. And this links back to what we were looking at before. Not all locations are necessarily gonna show up for all employees. So if you've got someone who only ever worked in the kitchen, then we'll only show that particular location for this employee, just to make it a lot simpler for you guys. You can also set required certifications or qualifications for a shift. Now, you can see here that if we need a first aid certificate, it's now coming up with a warning saying that Lucy actually doesn't have this particular qualification. So the system will then actually recognize who, which employees that you've got who has the particular qualification that you need and who's available to work at that time. And you can then select the particular employee that you need. Now this is useful because you don't just have to use this for qualifications, you can use this for skills. So keeping on with the hospitality example, if you have an employee, uh, if you need someone who let's say is a cocktail waiter for a shift, or you need a barista for a shift, you can set these up as your own qualifications, you can assign them to the relevant employees and then you can roster based on those skills. Now, there are also scenarios where you, let's say you've got a whole team of people um, and any one of those people can do the particular shift and you don't really care who actually does it. Um, so you can actually do that, um, you can set this up through an area called shift bidding. 
So here we can actually set a particular um, group of people. So this is uh, my front of house group, for example. And this will automatically pick up all the employees who are part of this group and it will send the shift out to all of those employees. Um, we can also, if we, um, if we are using awards for our employees, we've got over 40 modern awards built into the platform. So your employees, um, anyone who is on those particular awards, you can set up all of the rules so that it will calculate correctly. And I'll show you this in a moment. You can also set up different work types according to the, um, to the roster. Um, sorry, according to um, the award that the employee is working on. For ease here as well, I'm going to take out the bidding and I'm going to just have one employee and we're gonna have Elizabeth. Um, we can also set higher classifications here if the employee is working higher rates in that particular shift. So if they're doing higher duties. Um, you can set different roles as well if you want to. So um, if you, you can set these up yourselves, it's color coding in the actual roster. You can put any notes that go to the employees um, and then you can choose to publish the shift as well if you want to. Um, so if we publish the shift, that means it will actually go to the employee. They will be able to accept or decline the shift or swap the shift depending on whatever settings you guys have got set up. So really straightforward. So back to the um, example that I was gonna use before. So we've got a long shift, 9 a.m. till 11 p.m. Um, if we then go back into that shift, um, we can actually see our cost breakdown in here and you can see where it's picking up all of the rules of the particular award. So you can see it's automatically picked up that because the employee, because it's a Saturday, the employee is getting paid Saturday rates. It's put in a break automatically. It's picking up our, our overtime rates and when, they're, and when they're pulling through. So all of this is coming from that award interpretation engine. Now there's lots of other ways that you can view the roster as well. So I'm viewing this weekly. Um, you can also view it daily or fortnightly. You can also view it by start time instead of by employee, which is maybe a simpler way to view this. Um, as mentioned, you can um, view this start by start time by day as well, and you can drag and drop any of these as well. So you can see we've got Barry working here till 8 p.m. If we only want him working till 7 p.m., we can just drag that across. Um, we've also got shifts here that are unassigned. So if you've got shifts that you know you need to um, you need people to work for, but you haven't assigned an employee yet, you can set that up here, and so then you can apply employees when it comes closer to the time. Lots of other stuff that you can do with this as well. So um, you can um, you can copy the shifts from any time period to another time period. So if you if you want to um, uh, if you want to copy this across to the next week, then you can do. Or if you want to copy the next month, or even if you say I want to copy my roster from December last year into December this year, you can set up any particular times that you need to in here. It's all all custom built. Um, you can set up budgets. So you can set up budgets for particular locations if you want to, and you can have these as a percentage of forecasted sales if you want, or you can just have a straight wage budget. And managers can have a, a responsibility over this and it will give a traffic light warning system when you're approaching or exceeding your budgets. Um, you can also set up different templates within the platform as well. So if you've got um, certain typical employee formations or number of employees that you have for particular time periods or particular events or anything it might be, you can create these templates here and you can then just drop them into the relevant part of the, of the roster whenever you need to. You can also export the, um, the roster here if you want to and you can create those bidding groups which is what we looked at before where you can have like your front of house groups so that when you're doing your shift bidding they will automatically flow through. Also lots of different ways that we can filter the roster here. Um, so if you're only interested in one particular location, then you can filter by, these, by the, these locations. If you just wanna look at particular employees, then you can just filter for those employees. Um, and you can save filters as well. So that if you've got someone who only ever looks at a particular part of the roster, they have their own save filter and they can just come in and look at this whenever they want to. Lots of different permission sets as well with this, with people who can set up shifts but can't see costs and all that sort of stuff. So lots of stuff that we can customize for you around this. But this is a, the idea of this video has been to give you a, a good general overview. So I hope this has been helpful. I will now follow this up with a video um, which is gonna be on timesheets and how employees can clock on and off once we set the shifts for employees.